Welcome to the Run, Let, and Bald At You report. I want to speak about our last show, which was about the Trump case. We specifically wanted to shoot the show before the closing argument so that none of us would be influenced by what we might see or hear on television. We had Ethan Strimling on our show, uh, one of the most prominent Democrats in Maine. We had David Jones, who was considered to be Trump's number one person here in Maine. I predicted a not guilty verdict in less than five hours. My dear friend Rob predicted a hung jury, which was the prediction of most of the attorneys and uh, pundits in, the, in, in America. I was wrong. The jury came back in about six hours with a, not guilty, with a guilty verdict on all 34 counts. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, Trump said that this case was politically motivated, motivated, and I agree. The reason why I agree, folks, is because the district attorney who ran in that case, his campaign promise was, I'm going to get Trump. He didn't say he was going to eliminate crime in New York City and people going around and punching women in the face. No, he went after a man who was running for president of the United States. Imagine Stephanie Anderson, one of the best uh, district attorneys we've ever had in the state, saying, I'm running and I'm going after Janet Mills. I'm going right after. She's running for governor and I'm going to go after Janet Mills. Well, folks, I think it was politically motivated, just like I think the Biden, Biden case is politically motivated. Uh, I do not think it should stand on appeal. I think the judge should have recused himself. He donated money to the Biden campaign. His daughter works for the Democratic Party. Imagine somebody being charged with a crime of robbing the key bank to find out that the judge used to be on the board of directors and his daughter now works for Key Bank up in Brunswick. You think there's a conflict there? I spoke with a very um, well-versed man in ethics, taught ethics at the University of Michigan uh, Law School. His name is Bob Hirshon former president of the American Bar Association. I asked him point blank, do you think there was a conflict between the judge trying that case? He goes, well, there was at least an appearance of it. So that's where we stand. We'll go up on appeal uh, and we'll see what happens from there. But now let's move to this show. I've been doing this show for 20 years, covering all topics from uh, presidential candidates, gubernatorial candidates, uh, law shows. But this show is probably gonna be the most emotional for me because I think the worst thing that's going on in world history in many years is what's going on in Gaza and Ukraine. Rob, please introduce our guests. Thank you, Derry, and uh, appreciate your opening comments. Uh, yeah, I don't that, really agree that, with you. But, admitting, uh, that, oh, well, admitting that I was wrong? <laughs> yeah, no, I know, but that's okay. I respect your opinion. Don't happen to agree with, uh, with uh, some of what you said. That's but the only thing attorney, we really But our, our focus today is the, uh, the war in uh, Palestine, uh, Gaza, and could open up into the Golan Heights and uh, the West Bank, uh, mm -hmm. the way things are going. But I can't think of two more interesting uh, people to have on the show who, who have lived in the Middle East, who are, are passionate about it, who have family there. Uh, Ahmad Khalidi, who is the founder of uh, Auto Europe. Ahmad, thank you for being here. Ahmad is front, was born in Jerusalem. Auto Europe? Unbelievable, that's and here, huge. And, and I want you to talk a little bit about your, your background and how you came to America and, and your feelings, obviously, what's, with what's going on in, in your homeland. And Timmy Wilson, who I've known forever. Tim is the, uh, one of the early founders uh, and directors of the famous Seeds of Peace camp Seeds that brought uh, Israelis and Palestinians kids together to, to work together, to play together, to understand each other's uh, uh, cultures, and uh, all in an effort to promote peace. And you've been doing it for, for generations now, Tim, and continue to do it. So uh, I'd like to ask you both, uh, to give a little bit of your background, uh, and then we can talk about some of the issues uh, that are, are ongoing right now in Israel. Uh, Ahmad, let me start with you. Talk yeah. a little bit about your upbringing, your childhood in, in Palestine, and 
What brought you here? Good morning, everybody. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be next to Tim. Yeah. Two different races, two not diff different races, two different cultures. Yeah. And we'll have a nice discussion today about what's happening unbiased down in, in Palestine as Gaza and Israel, both of them. I was born in Jerusalem in 1951 from a family called the Khalidi family. We are one of the five best, biggest families in Jerusalem. My grandfather was the last. One of the five families. <laughs> yes. My grandfather was the last mayor of Jerusalem in 1944, 1945. Oh, really? really? Wow. That's oh, my God. And you can, he was also uh, uh, justice, for, uh, supreme justice. He was a Supreme Court justice? Exactly, both of them. So uh -oh. I, my mother sent me to a Jesuit school called Jean Baptiste de La Salle. That's where I speak French, English, Arabic. I learned Hebrew by myself, and I speak some Italian and Spanish. <laughs> so I left Jerusalem wow. and I, from 1951 to 1967. We were under the Jordanian mandate. I would call it the Jordanian occupation more than, than anything else. Uh, that's when, when Jerusalem, when Jerusalem, East Jerusalem was still under the Jordanian uh, control. Uh, control. In 67, the war happened, Six Days War. Right. We thought that we will, <laughs> we will invade, the Arabs will invade uh, Israel. Nothing happened. We were invaded by Israel. And, and when was that? What year? 67. 67. Okay, 67. right. 67. Yeah. And one day we saw the tanks from the Israeli, from the Israeli army coming into the Mount of Olives uh, down there. Tanks coming through the Mount of Olives, where I've been. We thought it Imagine was, that sight. Exactly. We thought it was Iraqis coming to help us. <laughs> oh, really? It was the Israelis. Israelis. <laughs> I lived four or five years in, in Jerusalem. I could not make it. I graduated as a, a chemistry minor, major in, in, in Birzeit College, and I left to France. In France, I worked for the Holiday Inn. I worked for Hertz. I worked for Renault. And then one of my smallest... Renault, plans, that, you said Renault, Renault yeah. yeah. Renault. The, the car, of course, exactly. Renault. One of my smallest accounts was Auto Europe, based in Camden, Maine. Mm. So he offered me a job of taking over the marketing, etc. So I flew from Paris to Camden, Maine, where is only one light. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Sunday, everything is closed. Paint place. <laughs> <laughs> Paint place. I worked That's it right. out, and then from Camden, Maine, we moved to Portland. Today, it's a company of, in 2019, pre-COVID, we were 600 employees, $600 million sales. I opened in uh, Munich. Lisbon, Sydney, more offices to do most international bookings for cars all over the world. Well, I can't it's believe a that phenomenal you, story. I can't believe that you have no experience doing anything. What an incredible history. Ken, tell us about you. Just, Timmy. just let me finish one oh, thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm the sorry. American, the American dream is there. And yes. I really want to tell the young generation. I came here with $500 in my pocket. Now you can add so many zeros. Yes, that's <laughs> in front right. Of the, $500. the American dream is an opportunity. Grab it. Work it hard, ethically, and it pays off. And you said that, that, that you uh, open your business to people that, that are recovering, correct? Well, 40 percent of, of, of how many percent? 40 percent of 40 percent of the comes people from recovery, yeah. rehab, rehab uh, homes. What wonderful. a wonderful man you wonderful. are! Wonderful. Go ahead, my friend. Thank you, Ahmad. Thanks, Tim. Um, the best way to put this is, I'm going to do seeds of peace in my involvement for 31 years. Right. Um, in 1993, uh, John Wallach and a, and a woman, uh, Bobby Goschuk, their right. co-founders. Bobby lives, as part of her time, she lives up in uh, uh, near, uh, near Augusta, and she did camping and stuff in Maine. And uh, she and John got together at a book club thing, and John was talking about the Middle East and what had happened with the first Trade Center bombing in, 19, in March of 1993. He decided that he wanted to do something. So he, he collected art. So he took some of his art, talked to the, Palest the Palestinian Authority, um, the ambassador to Israel and Egypt, um, and decided he wanted to do something. So he came to a man here, and his name was Dr. Joel Bloom. Right. Because his son had been a camper at Powhatan, the camp. So uh, in August, the last couple of weeks in August of 1993, the camp started. And at that camp, there were 45 boys coming from Israel, Palestine, and Egypt. And he got them to agree to do that. That started Seeds of Peace. 
we wound up on the front lawn of the Rose Garden that September. And um, at that particular time, that's the beginning for Seeds of Peace because we were all over television because of those 45, actually 47, because there were two Americans. They, they, they were right there. Right. And, 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 and who Tim, was president then? Yeah, uh, right. at, the, at, at that time, it was um, Arkansas. Clinton. 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim, uh, and your background is athletics. You were a great coach for the University of Maine. Uh, uh, it, no, you were. You, your, your freshman team uh, that you coached uh, could beat the second team of the University of Maine. <laughs> you be, by the way, one of my dearest friends from Bowdoin uh, and Orono High School, one of the greatest athletes from Orono High School, played football for uh, Bowdoin, played against the, the uh, University of Maine in 1965, and unfortunately had an injury, I won't name what it is, but it involves the human body and male parts, and <laughs> therefore never played football again. Uh, and it happened in the University of Maine game, uh, and I think you were the coach, I don't put blame on you. Uh, <laughs> I, one thing I wanna ask uh, you first, uh, uh, Tim, you're watching all this unfold on television, are you personally hurt by this? Are you upset by it? Is it causing day-to-day -day problems for you? Well, first of all, I deal with kids. I don't get into policy. He knows. I, right. I, my job has always been developing leadership within the framework of kids, males and females. We started out with only males right. in 93 and 94, Queen Noor and Barbara Streisand and and Hanin Ashwari, I mean, they sat right in front of me after we were on the- Barbara Streisand? Oh yeah, they all, they were in front of me. Barbara Streisand was there? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but they were all there, and they looked at me and said, Queen North said, we're gonna have girls at camp next year. It wasn't, can we? We are. Oh my God, that's a great story. So in 1994, that's fantastic. We, had, we had girls come to camp. We went from 46 to 124. What? Our kids, and we had Jordan, and we uh, Morocco, and we added, you know, the the other what we call the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, w out of that, I guess the best way of putting it is the young people who were there, and in later years, they're adults now, children, businesses, law lawyers, doc whatever. And their parents, I got to know because I actually lived in East Jerusalem. Uh, and I started going over there really in 1998. But uh, after John passed away uh, in July of 2002, the board people knew that they, we had to keep our programming going all year round. And I wound up going over there, I would spend six months there right. and then come back here and run camp. So sure. I was doing both of those. And Seeds of peace. Seeds uh, of peace. But Tim, but Tim yeah. uh, uh, Derry was asking a question in terms of looking at what's happening now in Gaza, yeah. in Palestine, uh, what, are your, what are your feeling? I mean, a lot of the, pe the kids that you worked with and, and trained and had at camp are now in leadership positions. Yeah. Uh, do you talk to them? How, what, where, where are they? We, uh, we, we talk a lot. I don't think I'll give you one example and I'll move away. Yeah, and then I want to get... Uh, uh, um, and he probably knows who I'm talking about. There's a gentleman named Dr. Saab Adekat. Saab was the chief negotiator for the Palestinians. Uh, I got Saab was like a uh, big brother as was another woman in, from Israel. I mean, I had two people who really spent a lot of time explaining things to me. But Saab, um, his sons actually came to Maine, mm -hmm. Kent Hill and Bridgeton Academy. Oh, really? So he had two kids who actually gra you know, graduated from school here and graduated from Manhattanville. But Saab was back and forth here a lot. And, and um, he became not just, uh, you know, somebody I knew, but a friend. His wife, he died two years ago uh, during the COVID thing. But, but his wife is very close to my wife, mm -hmm. as well as he has twin daughters. I'm not, politically, I'm not gonna go too far with this, but his one daughter is Zalal Erekat. 
and she's the spokesperson that you see on a lot of things, and she don't mess around. And where was she a spokesperson? She's the most spokesperson for the PLO. Where? And where does she speak? She Maybe. speak. She's on everything. She she travels. She is the dominant person, I think, for young people in Palestine. She was the seat. She was. Is she is she now involved in what's going on over there? She's involved because she's like the spokesperson. She's the one who's speaking to the EU. She's the one that you see. If you go to LinkedIn and you look her up and you follow, you get the message on her okay. part. So she's That's a primary right. player in this whole thing? Oh, she's a primary, what I call, spokesperson. Well, I call her a great player. You call her a spokesperson. Yeah. Somebody who was connected uh, to your program and well, was going she's, on to a leadership she's, role. She's just unbelievable. Her, her, her sister is a premier right. uh, eye, eye, sur eye surgeon. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and an unbelievable woman too. And yeah. her daughter came to Seed's camp last summer. Nice. So, so what I'm trying to say is there's this, this is going on. And on the other side, when you talk about Israel, there are kids, there's a, there's a young man who's one of the top news broadcasters in Israel. Uh, uh, he, he, and he was at Seed's with you? He was with Seed's with me, Ariel Margalit. Unbelievable. The, the, when they talk about what's going on out there, they do it with compassion. They, they explain in the best way they can from a humanistic point of view. You know, we can, we can debate whatever happened on October 7th. That's one thing. But John Wallach wrote a book called The Enemy Has a Face. Mm. And, and the kids relate to that. Okay. That are all, um, all yeah, human. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I really want to hear from Ahmed. Uh, go yeah, ahead. Am I, am I, uh, talk a little bit about, you know, you're, you still have family there, you, and, and the impact that this war is having on your, your connections, your family, and you personally right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to be as brief as possible. No, 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 go ahead. My family is from Jerusalem. <clears throat> right. My brother, <clears throat> I've got a brother who lives in Ramallah, and I've got a brother who lives in California, who works for the DOD, training uh, generals and uh, lieutenants on the Arabic culture when they go to okay. Egypt, etc. This war, the, what's happening in Gaza is a, is a cancer in my heart. Yeah. A it's cancer in your heart? Sure. That's how I feel, my friend. Go exactly. ahead. I mean, they have got two extreme people, one yeah. from the Israeli side, corrupt and extremist, one from the Palestinian side, very extreme religious pe people who are trying to, to, to liberate Palestine by, by force and by whatever it is. The story starts from 1917. 1917, Belfort declared that the Jewish nation in Europe has the right to have a country called Israel in Palestine. That's the first step which went wrong. Second step, which we are paying for, mostly, is the Holocaust and Nazism, which made the, the European Jews exodus to Palestine. Mm -hmm. So right. the pre-1900s, it was 50% Muslims, 25% Christians, 25% Jewish. Okay. The Christians were living in Nazareth, Bethlehem. The Jewish were living in Tel Aviv. And the Muslims were living in Jerusalem, as well as Haifa, and not Haifa even, Yaffa, mostly, and Gaza. Yeah. Gaza. So from 40 to 47, the, the Jewish population increased from 25% to 50%. They came back from Europe highly educated, highly trained military highly knowledgeable of the war, war actions. And in 1948, they, they went, massacred 50 villages, men and women. Around 1,500 people were massacred in 1948. 48. The, 48, go to the history, it goes, yes. goes to history. The Palestinians fled some 750, which was 1 million, 750 of which fled to Gaza. <laughs> and the remaining stayed in Jerusalem and East Jerusalem. So this is the story. I've got a map of 47 Palestine. Yep. We were a nation. We were a country. We yep. were a currency. We were educated. Yes. Uh, and then all of a sudden, no nation, no currency, nothing. They became Jordanian, became Israeli. It became the dinar. It became the shekel. Not the shekel. It was the, at the time the Israeli. All of a sudden, in one day, we lost everything. Now. Differently from the, from the Israeli part, the Israelis were lucky to have great leaders. What, what did you say? Great leaders. Oh, great leaders, yes. Ben-Gurion, 
Oh yeah. Right. Golda Meir. We had nothing. <laughs> it seems we had nothing. Sure. We had somebody called Ahmad uh, Shukeri, who was uh, talking to, to cook. We had Arafat. They don't want to talk badly Arafat, but I can tell you his hands were bloody. Arafat, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then in 1987, who helped uh, Hamas to support Hamas? Israel and the USA to, to uh, weaken the PLO. It was a very simple equation. And, and, and Netanyahu by, continued to, uh, continues the, to the, do the, that. The, the, I'm sorry, in, in the five, two minutes I tried to... No, 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 no. The whole the history of the Middle well, East. I, I, I'm not explaining something to the audience. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have been to Jerusalem a number of times, and the first time I went, I, I couldn't believe that you have a city, one section is Palestinian, then you got the Catholic section, then the Christians, I mean, then you got- Christians are Palestinian. What's that? Christians, Christians are Palestinian. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. And then Good. you got uh, uh, the, the uh, Jewish section, and you got these sections in the city, and they and all the live section. peacefully. And they got all the shops in the middle of Jerusalem. This one's run by so and so, this one's by. And they're all living peacefully within that city in these different sections. And what you're saying is, People were able to sort of live peacefully. Now, by the way, you go to Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen, this is back in 1985. There's a lot of military, they, they were machine guns everywhere. Uh, I don't care where you go, of course, now. And so you gave us a history of how this conflict just kept getting bigger and bigger, didn't you? Yes. Okay. And then I just want to add one thing go ahead. on this conflict. I want to add one thing on this conflict. Yeah, please. Go ahead. If you are a Jewish from New York, and if I open my mouth, don't accuse me of being anti Semite. I'm not anti-Semite. Abraham had two kids, yeah. Ishmael and Israel. I am a descendant of Ishmael, right. and uh, uh, yeah. Israel are the Israeli Israelis. Yeah. Do you have I'm, Jewish friends here? I have got plenty of, of Jewish friends in Israel. You do too, right? I, in Israel, I've got, I've got excellent friends who are Israelis. Cool, yeah. Israelis. Okay. Yeah, because the, 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 the difficulties over there, exactly. there's not much difficulty so, here, uh, right? Uh, Let go me ahead. continue what bothers me mostly. Any Jewish over here can go to Jerusalem and live in Jerusalem two seconds, takes a flight, he becomes either, he will be American, Israeli in Israel, and have a passport to live in Jerusalem. I am not allowed. Not allowed to, to go to Jerusalem. Because in 1971, 72, I left France with a, uh, with a permit, and the permit said with a very thin, thin, fine lines, you have to go back three years afterwards in, to, to Israel to renew your permit of going out. I came back after four years, they sent me out of the bridge, Alambi, where the crossing was, and told me, go and renew your, uh, your, your permit in Paris, where I was living. So I went to Paris, to, went to the Israeli embassy to renew my permit. After three months, I came back to tell them, what, what's happening with my permit? Yeah. You have never given us a U.S. permit. We have never seen you. You are totally... You are, you are, they didn't want you to go back. No, but and today I cannot go back. You can, I cannot live in Jerusalem. So what would, happen the, if, what, what would happen if you flew to Tel Aviv and got off the plane? From the airport, they're sending back they're to America. Right back. Maybe sometimes even, not even leaving the USA. The discrimination is incredible. What, what, what the Palestinians have, have endured for generations and generations. 75 years. I yeah, am not, not anti-Jewish whatsoever. Right. I'm not anti-Semite. I'm anti-Israeli extremists who have put rules and regulations up to discriminate. It's, the question is very simple. Occupier and occupied. Yes. Strong and weak. My dear friend, I want to thank you because what you did for me was to explain to me the history of the discrimination that you folks have felt. Simple. And that discrimination reached a level where you just, quote, can't take it anymore. Rob. And Tim, when you bring these kids together, Mm -hmm. uh, the, Palis uh, the Palestinian boys and girls and, and the uh, Israeli, you've got an occupier and, a, mm -hmm. and the occupied. How do, they, how do they communicate? How do they get along? Yeah. How do you break down that barrier? Simple. You have to, first of all, um, this, this, again, is sim simplicity. Um, the parents I grew up with, I mean, we had a conversation. <coughs> um, I started learning about the Middle East when I was 10 years old because of Ralph Bunch. Right, yes. And I, I know some of the things that were spoken about, I've heard, okay, the other side of it is, I've traveled there before 67. Um, I went from uh, southern part of Aqaba to Petra by horseback with the Bedouins. I mean, what I'm saying is I got a taste of that world when I was young. Uh, 
getting back to your question, it helps me when I'm talking with the kids because I can see when it when it's getting into I'm I'm going to tell my sorrow, and my sorrow is bigger than yours, and the idea is is to realize for the kids to realize the person sitting next to them, they didn't do, they didn't do certain things. I don't care where you're coming from, whatever, they didn't do it. Take your time and find out about them. Uh, we say, when we do this, it's called, we do dialogue. Dialogue. Every day. And we have been doing it that way since we started in 93. And we have people who come in and facilitate. The conversation gears up with things that I might say in the morning lineup. Biggest thing is God gave you two ears and one mouth. If he'd meant it the other way, it would have been the other way. So we work on listening skills. <laughs> two ears and one mouth, I've yeah. never heard that saying before. But, but we work on listening skills. And you can scream over me, I'm not listening to you. But if you take your time, listen to what I have to say, and I listen to what you have to say, maybe we might just begin a, a beginning of understanding. The next thing is, from that, we work to allow kids to, to have that time and ways to talk about, just like it was presented, about his family and the things that are going on. We have kids who the same situation in, 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 in Palestine. But on the other hand, we have Israeli kids who are from certain parts of Israel who come, from, their parents were from the Holocaust, so they have certain things they bring. Oh, yeah. And, it, and, it, and, it, and <clears throat> the bottom line, though, you ask, we don't, we, we, we base everything on something called the stool. These three legs. Trust, communication, and respect. Three legs. Mm -hmm. And you work, you work on that. The seat can be anything, even for us. You're married, your job, or whatever, the people you work with, this develops into a skill set. Uh, uh, folks, I, 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 I got to cut to the chase here. Uh, what I want to get to on this show is, I, I know the seeds of peace and all that. What the hell are we going to do about the unbelievable murder of children and women and men that have, don't even know what this is about? That is what's killing me. When you talk about the cancer in your heart, I cannot believe that this world cannot stop the killing of these children. And they, they brought four hostages back, great, and killed 200, 200 people to do over it. Over 200 people. And I to want do your it. feelings. I know we're doing seeds of I want to know the feelings that you have about what's happening to your people. Not over, I mean, what is the feelings about how do we stop killing these people? Uh, Ahmad. Two things. Ahmad. It's very simple. Do we, if we resolve the story, the history of the extremism, both sides, right. that will bring the people like me and my friends in Israel to sit down and make peace, the real peace. The real peace. Not right. the 1994 Oslo. The 1994 Oslo was a trap, was, did not work out. Uh, it's Hakrabin was killed was assassinated, he was the right person to do the peace and to lead us to peace. He was assassinated by an extreme Jewish person in, inside his own, uh, his own country. This is num number one. And I think the USA, which is the master key, or key, key country to resolve the problem, has to be unbiased vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians and unbiased vis-a-vis -vis the Israelis. Exactly. What should the president of the United States, whether it be Trump, Biden, or don't care who it is, what should the president of the United States do on the election after election about this war, Unbi about this crime? Unbiased and have got the guts to tell the, the, whoever the prime minister of Israel and whoever is the leader of Palestinians, stop this or I will stop you differently. I think Biden's trying to do that with uh, Netanyahu. Not in the beginning. Is he doing strong? What's that? We, we yeah. don't agree on this one. Yeah. But I was, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat, a fervent de Democrat. I know you are. And with Biden backing Israel in the beginning, in the beginning. Right. 1,000% or yes, 1 million percent, without paying attention to the, the, what happened to the Gazans, he paid for it and he's going to pay for it oh. because there are 250,000 Palestinians in Michigan. Michigan. I am one of them. But today I changed my mind because 2735 United Nations steps for peace. 
by, written by Biden and announced by Biden, I believe this is the right equation. Right. Of, and and you, change, you, excuse me, and you change I'm your back, mind about I'm, what? I'm Biden. back, I'm back go, going to vote for him. You're yes. going to vote for Biden. 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 Uh, so you're sticking with Biden. For you, six months, I did not. Uh, and, and so you don't think that Trump getting in there can, 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 he will can destroy it more? He will destroy it more. He, he, more? He, he, will no. he will destroy it more. By, uh, Trump will kill it more, will increase the hatred. Trump moved the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. which is anti-international law. Yeah. He annexed, accepted the annexation of Gilan Heights, Gulan Heights for Israel, which is an international law not to do so. Right. There is, uh, Jerusalem is not, was never, never accepted as the capital of Israel for years by America. Right. By Reagan, by the uh, Republicans, as, as Bush. By Bush, Eisenhower, uh, nobody accepted Tel Aviv to be the, because there were rules and fine red lines that the USA did not trespass. The, in the beginning, Biden did not listen, was too much pro-Israel. Today, he, he paid for oh, it. Oh, yes. He paid for it uh, because 37,000 killed. Under the rubble, we don't know how much. Yeah, I know it. 70,000 injured, mutated. 15,000 orphans. Oh, my God. 40,000, 30,000 uh, with, uh, widows. It's all over the place. And you lost friends. I lost guys. families we, we and friends. All, we, all and have. We, all, we all have lost. And, you know, there are uh, young uh, Israeli uh, soldiers uh, going there, blown up. Uh, Is it uh, worth it? Yeah. Uh, 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 Ahmad, uh, the reason why I keep interrupting is because don't worry. You, you make comments, both of you, that are so cogent, so deep. I, I want to get in on that. How many, uh, approximately how many friends and family did you lose? I lost my I, brother and uh, two Bowden friends this week, and it kills you. How many did you lose? I, lose, I lost two Khalidi families originally in Gaza. And what happened to uh, them? Uh, bombarded by the, the 2,000 uh, and killed. killed and killed. And the way the others are living. Look how the famine, starvation, the international law, the Nazis did, did the following. Starvation. On, yep. Yep. That's right. Starvation and and, uh, and uh, occupation, occupation. Right. of the Jewish nations in in, 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 the, in in France as well as in anywhere oh, else. Oh sure. Israel. Did, I can't understand one thing. A nation like Israel, who suffered from the Nazis, applies certain ways on the Palestinians. In 1987, I was invited by the Jewish community in Paris to talk about the peace. I told them, "Don't shake hands with Arafat. Shake hands with Saeed Irakat." Don't shake hands with Arafat. Arafat, shake it with Saeb Erekat, the guy who you I got, know. Who, because the ones who are inside, who went under the occupation, understood better the mentality of the Israelis to make peace. Uh, uh, Tim, what, what man do you think, Biden, Trump, whatever, can, can, can perhaps do it? Uh, I'm, uh, first of all, you're not a political guy. I, I, uh, He's but it is politics. But go yeah, ahead, though. It's, You've got an opinion on it. it. I'm an independent, have been since I yep. came to Maine 60 years ago. Um, and, and that's a whole other thing about my person, my, who I am, where I grew up with. I'm black. I'm a black American. I'm not African American. I'm a black American, an American who happens to be black. That influences me when I start talking about Palestine. Yes. That's why... Saab Erekat became a, a very, very close friend. I'm proud. I mean, he would tell people when I came to Jericho, this is my brother. And people, because of the way I look, in Jericho, I fit right in. Been to Jericho, by the way, for the place. But anyway, getting to your question. People make peace. Leaders make war. Mm -hmm. Good point. And the kids and the, and the people, the young people coming up, They'll determine what's going to happen next. There's one thing I'm going to say. I've grown up listening to my grandfather and my parents about things in this country. And the one thing my father always said is, if you if aren't careful, you will breed young people who will be opposed to the things that you believe in if they're not educated, and if they're not looked upon with respect. Now what's gonna happen in the Middle East, because of this war and all the people, I mean, I have a 97-year-old brother who fought in the Second World War. 
His point is this. What's left, even after they stop this, is all those orphans, all those people who are young. This is not going to stop the, the, the idea, oh, everything will be okay after. You're right, you're right. It's not going to be that no. way. No. It's going to, I mean, I look at it this way. We'll be gone. Okay? Right. Long gone. Long gone. It could be 100 years before they're able to, to do what they should have done a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, my, it, my dear friend, I came, I wanted to do this show with my dear pal here because I wanted an answer from two people who had lived right in it. Yes. And what you're telling me is that it's going to take 100 years, a century, to come even close. That's right. <coughs> do you agree with that, Amar? I agree totally with what two things you do, said. You do agree? Two things he said, which I agree. <coughs> the orphans of today are going to, do, to be <coughs> both sides. We are going to be the, military, the fighters between each other yeah. in 17 years. We know that 2005, 2024, the, the Hamas fighters are from the 2005 war. Orphans who, who joined Hamas yeah. because of that. And you can see that any, any soldier in, in Gaza who is dead, who, who dies, his kids are going to be haters of Palestinians. It, the hatred is going to continue on. That's the number one. And I agree with you, it's between people that I agree with, no problem in 100 years. I have no doubt in my mind. I will be a gun, my kids will be gun. There is a generation in 100 years will, I hope one thing in life, we get a, attacked by aliens so that we all people get- <laughs> We'll <stretched>. be one. <laughs> so yeah. There's no Trump, there is no Biden. <laughs> yes. I, I, I can't believe you just said that. Because I, I often have thought to myself, we've all thought, if in fact we have God's voice from above or Jesus walks on or anybody, or it comes alive, this is the way it's gonna be. And you're saying, we have aliens show up, and all of a sudden we're all united, right? <laughs> Just we'll, have, we'll have snitches for the aliens. Uh, I want to say to yeah. both of you that uh, you're talking about, you focus on youth, and we all know that when something happens to you, trauma traumatizes you as a child. I lost my dad at age 12, and basically people say, there he's still 12. You go back to capture that youth. So the orphans you're talking about, the people, the, the kids, imagine a child there in, in, in Gaza, uh, Rafa, sides. Both, sides. both sides. Both sides, whatever. Yeah. And they're living this horrible life at age 12, 10, 11, that's all they can think about. Now all of a sudden they become an adult, like me. I'm still going back to age 12, uh, getting to know Brenda Lee and Bobby Rydell, and, uh, because you, you want to recapture that. And what you're telling me is that it can't change because the children are eventually going to be men and women. Exactly. Correct? Correct. I, re I remember talking to uh, George Mitchell uh, when he was appointed. He tried by, to bring peace. He did. He, he was appointed by, uh, by Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to be a Middle East peace envoy. And I remember you- Three Barack Obama by Clinton also. By Clinton, too, that's I correct. Met, yes. I met George right. with uh, Elliot, Elliot Cutler at his house talking about the Palestinian-Israeli yeah. conflict. I was, it's like- We this. had hope that's right. for exactly. we had, when, when George Mitchell was appointed, we yeah. had- go, go but, he, but I remember congratulating him and he was on his way uh, getting sworn in and he was getting ready to take on this other mission after he had uh, negotiated the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland, which bringing Catholics and Protestants together after <laughs> yeah. centuries of uh, discrimination. You talk about the occupied and the occupier. Northern Ireland is a great example of that. George said he, he was not hopeful. He was not hopeful when was I was not. talking to him. He said this has gone on for thousands of years. That's correct. And it's, uh, but he, he ended up meeting with uh, Assad in Syria and Lebanon and uh, Jordan and uh, Israel, Netanyahu. Uh, and, and it was just almost an impossible uh, task because Netanyahu now has held on to power. And he, I, I think it's clear to everybody, he has no desire to have a two-state solution. No, no desire. desire. The Mitchell principles that George came out with are dust right now, dust. as long as he is in office. How, from your Israeli connections, how do they feel about Netanyahu? Anti Netanyahu. What's the that? Good question. My friends, yes. Israelis, yeah. are first of all left. 
okay. like me. They are totally, totally anti Netanyahu, anti 100%. Yeah. But the, 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 the Labour Party in Israel weakened so much after its Akrabin was killed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But Barak, uh, Ehud Barak, did try to do to replace it. It wasn't the charisma that uh, Rabin, Rabin yeah. had. And after that, nobody came in. And today, the, the, the center is okay, but the right, the left, left has nobody. And nobody. They're, they're, they, Go ahead, know, Tim. The, the, the one thing, that, again, you have to understand, he, see, it's, what's enjoyable for me is having someone speak to history that I learned from other people and he's just speaking to it. It's like having being in a well, classroom. He's lived it. <laughs> and so he is. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just like having someone like Gerald Talbot speak about black people sure. in sure. Maine. You, he lived it. Exactly. So that's, that's the important part of this. Right. My view, when I talk about this from here, it's real simple for me. And that is, the Ixlach Rabin, who I had the chance. To me. Yeah. Ixlach Rabin, his death was, if you go back and do your homework, you realize the Netanyahu people, it's that word of mouth. Mm -hmm. The per person who killed him is a part of that, that group. Sound familiar? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So they kill him. So you, from him, you had this here that went here. Right. And it's been there. Yes. You know, where there, were, there were times when it started moving up, and then the settlers and the right, I call them the black hats, they, that, they took over. They, they wiped out whole groups of people. Um, right, right now, you have people who may have their heart in the Israeli side, mm -hmm. they're having a hard time with people who teach. You better do certain things a certain way, even if you're Israeli and you don't tout what the head person in charge is talking about, you can be, you can lose your job. Uh, in, Does Israel. That sound, in Israel. Does that sound familiar? Yes, yeah. Tim. Oh, okay. Yeah. All I'm trying to say is back to what I said to you before. It really, it really, it's going to come down to people. Yes. See, it, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm not talking about left, right. I'm talking about people being genuine, honest, ethical, and be responsible, being the best human beings they can be. The problem is we're not being the best human beings we That's can be. That's for sure. And we've lost some things that I know his family tried to teach him when he was young. You know I know your family, your mother and father used to feed my teams. Yeah. And I, so I'm, I'm going back to history. <laughs> it's like, like Bill Cohen, people, I mean, I, I had that opportunity in this state to see people who were real. George Mitchell, heck, George, I don't want to get this story, but George used to come and we'd spend time talking about this issue because he was a part of Seeds of Peace too. The show was. And his, his ideas, I mean, I, he, he had me in Ireland in 2000. He did. You, you went to Ireland? Oh, I was in oh Ireland in 2000 Fantastic. Because, because of George. Yeah. yeah. He sent me to spend time with some of the women who got out of prison mm -hmm. and educational stuff. I, I, I mean, I, never mind. I want to get to the point to you guys. Yes. I applaud what you have us here doing. Yeah. This is important. People have to understand, I'm not, I'm not gonna stand here and say to you, to people about Israel, look, I have friends on both sides. Right. Kids on both sides. As I have kids, am I. I have kids who have to serve in the military. I've had kids who work for me, who would put their arms down in one room of, a, of the center in Jerusalem, put their green shirts on to be a part of a program, okay? That happened. Oh, just blowing me, blowing me away. That happened. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are now working to keep kids working at stuff. They have to do it in a unicameral way. They want to do bicameral stuff. They can't. 
What do you mean by camera? Yeah, and between Palestinians and oh, Israelis. Oh, yes, yeah, gotcha. They, they, they now are doing, you know, it, it's even difficult in Israel because you have, you have the Palestinian Israelis who carry what they call the blue card. And, they, and, 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 and then you turn around and you have Ramallah, and I've got people in Ramallah who are Christian who are telling me the things that are going on in Ramallah between the IDF and the settlers. Yeah. Well, there's no conversation about that, and there should be conversation because people are losing their lives. Mm. I guess what I'm trying to say is what I said to you before. We, we, we're, we're, this is, this, we're in bad shape here. Bad shape where? In this country. In the U.S. In the U.S. because we got caught up in the anti-Semitism. Yes. And at the same time, there are people who don't understand the things they need to understand before they open their mouths. Well, they don't want to bother. Oh, they're just, you know, it's the, the, like, the, you know. Uh, uh, Tim. It's, it's a Coca-Cola uh, thing. They, nobody, nobody wants to learn. No. Uh, people should be watching the show, but they're not going to want to bother. They, would, they want to take their viewpoint. By the way, I just want to say one thing because I want this show not to be so serious. You made a comment a few minutes ago about uh, your family used to feed my teams. I want the audience to know you're talking about the Baldacci restaurants. That's right. Uh, where, where the football teams and the bads, they go down to the Baldacci's to get a decent meal before they play football the next day. I just wanted the audience to know that. Uh, Appreciate the plug. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing. That's well, yeah. please, they have to know that. From you and Pat, to charity. Which yeah, that's great. right. You Thank and Pat's you. pizza fed, fed all the Penobscot County. Go ahead, let's we, move on. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, but, you know, the, 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 since you brought that up, but it is important because his parents, I mean, if I told you the stories about his parents and my wrestling teams or my football <laughs> teams when we were going to play on the other side, down sure. to, going down to, you know, uh -huh. in, in, in any other part of Penobscot County or we were in Hamden playing and we'd stop with the kids coming back and feed them to go home back to Dexter. If I told you how many times that happened or when I was at U of Maine, and, and, and the main team, I'd bring the whole football team over after we played somewhere. Sure. And the freshman. Timmy's he, been uh, advised to governor since Ken Curtis. Every governor. Who I love, Ken Curtis. Republicans, and Joe Democrats, and, and independents. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've had a, you know, it's like um, a guy who was in the legislature at the time I was there. I, when I first got to Dexter, and we won our first football championship in 1969. Uh, class S? You no, know, then it was C. You were C, okay. okay. <laughs> and and uh, we won, you know, a couple of years in a row in football. But you beat Oren, no? Yep. <laughs> My team. All right. And, we, we ought to focus back on I know, uh, I know. Gaza, yeah, yeah, but okay. this has been fun. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I don't know how many more, uh, how much more time we have. About 10 minutes, I think. About 10 minutes? Yeah. Uh, Ahmad and, and Tim, uh, as we sit here today, the bombs continue to fly. Uh, you know, Netanyahu is still holding on to control. Uh, Biden is trying to come up with a, uh, a, a settlement. Uh, he and his Secretary of State uh, have, have spent countless trips, uh, hours and hours and hours, dealing with, uh, with all of Arab uh, countries and, and Israel. Do you think anything is going to be able to uh, to develop here in terms of a peace settlement? Uh, uh, may, may I come yeah. back to the story of anti-Semitism in this country? Okay, please. There are two types of anti-Semitism in this country. The supremacist whitest yes. who are taking this Palestinian Gaza issue as an opportunity to increase anti-Semitism. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, I don't think that when we talk, we are anti-Semitic. But every time, time I open my mouth, I'm accused to be anti-Semitic. I cannot be anti-Semitic. Am I anti-Zionist? Uh, yes. yes. Am I anti-Semitic? I've not. I cannot not. be anti-Semitic. I've got two problems, and here I, I really want to talk let's, to you. Yeah, let's talk Putin. about this. Uh, the, the extreme right in Israel, the religious extreme right in Israel, says they are the chosen people of God. Is that discrimination? That's number one. Secondly, there are 1.2 million 1948 Palestinians who stayed in Israel, and yeah. they are a part of the Israeli community. They call them Arab uh, Israelis, they don't call them Palestinian because the right. word Palestinian was has supposed to be erased from the dictionary. We are five point, we are today between West Bank, Gaza, and those guys, five million people. Netanyahu and his team 
wants to change the state of Israel into the Jewish state, state of Israel. Israel. It's as if you are saying this is the main, is the American Catholic or Protestant state of Maine. Okay. He, okay. That's, that's, that, those, those things have to stop from their side so that we are not accused of anti-Semitism. It's anti-Zionism. Anti-Zionism. Yeah, right. Anti-Zionism Zionism wants, there is one thing more which is going to be uh, important for me to say. Go ahead. In 1948, when Israel took over the, the part of Israel, all their leaders, one by one, I've got 100 quotes, which said, from the sea to the river. Yeah. Okay. Now, the river does not limit them to the Jordan River because there is the Forat and the Tiger, and, which yeah. is uh, more than that. We say from the river to the sea, in counterpart of what they say, because we limit ourselves to the sea, and we don't say, which I, I can confirm that Israel exists. Yeah. There is no way it will go away anywhere. Right. Like, we exist. There is no way we can go anywhere. It's right. high time that this becomes not Jewish state of Israel, not the chosen people of God, the real democratic people of the, mid, of the Near East. Yes. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to add on. That it really bothers me, the Jewish state of Israel, as well as the chosen people of, of God. And, uh, repeat your question, Rob, please. Yeah, no, I, I, I think Ahmad has uh, He's answered brought up, brought up yeah, a, sure. a, a, an, an interesting point because uh, you, you mentioned the anti-Semitism right. that's going on, but, but it works both ways. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a, there's a I, I grew up, um, I'm half Lebanese. My, my grandparents immigrated from Lebanon. So in the early is very common, you and I. Absolutely. We're, we're neighbors like Canadians and Americans. That's right. But my, my situ, my grandmother used to tell me uh, how, the, how the Israelis, when they established Israel, would drive out the Palestinians yeah. and the Arabs from their, from their just, homes. Just, just drive them take, right out. Pushed them right out. Get out of here. Massacred yeah. them. And, and, the, and the massacre and killing. Well so story. that that's what I grew up with. So you already heard it as a lot young boy. I was a young boy, and to hear you, who you've lived it, and you've been over there and experienced the atrocities and on both sides. I mean, no one can condone both what sides. Hamas did no, in right. October. I condemn Hamas. Absolutely. Hamas had no right to kill innocent Israeli people in the 1,200 had no right to do that. Right. By Quran, by their religion, it's forbidden to do that, massacre few children and youth. If they had a fight, soldier to militia, I have no problem with that. Right. That fight became dirty. I might pay for that because if, you know, sometimes Hamas can reach me, whatever it is, I don't care. At this yeah. point, I don't care. Go ahead. There, Hamas had no right to do what has happened. Right. It killed 1,200. But Israel, one to four, the equation is one to four. Yeah. One to 40, sorry, not one to four, one to 40. So one to 30, 40. Yeah, 1,200 1, killed from the Israelis. Yes. Right? We are at 37,000. Yes. Maybe and, to 40. And growing. It's one killed from right. the Israeli side, 40 from the Palestinian side, uh, plus 500,000 houses. Yes. Right. Ahmad, I say to people, when we got attacked on 9-11, 3,000 people were killed, and we retaliated uh, appropriately as, as we could, but we didn't go over and kill a half a million uh, innocent people. We, we tried to target, we go after Osama bin Laden, and 3,000 people were killed. And that's what concerns me too. That, yeah, that was a horrible thing that happened in October, but now, you, 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 you really, uh, uh, there's a man I know, a, a couple cats ran across his deck, and he shoots them both. Now come on, I, I have to say to you, you just spoke it so well, you, you decry what, they, what happened on that day, but you're saying, okay, enough is enough. Very well spoken, my friend. I want oh, to add on. I want we, to add, we have four minutes, so, and we, we can't have long answers one, now. One, I want to add, add one thing on your thing. We lost 4,000 and 3,000 in 9-11, but we lost another 4,000 of our young kids going to Baghdad, to Baghdad as well as Afghanistan. to Afghanistan, That's right. Iraq. while it took us five, seven people to kill Osama bin Laden and finish with it. Exactly. So why don't and I cannot say it loudly, why don't we go after the Sinoir from one side yes. and, the, and the settlers from right. the other side instead of going through the whole nations? Which it, is, it, I, amen. Both. I agree with both you. Both sides. If Sinoir was the wrong guy, I don't know. It, I, I'm not saying this is wrong or this is right. In, 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 in what, what the, the Obama did is kill the source, which is Osama bin Laden. Yeah. 
And that's what we what Netanyahu uh, should do. But, but Israel not. keeps saying, well, we're, 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 we kill 3,000 innocent people to get the bad guy, not really realizing the bad guy's got replacements to walk right in the door again. That's what bothers me. They go, well, we got that bad guy, but of course we killed 300 kids that were doing it. That's yeah, I'm, not comparing, I'm not comparing Al Qaeda to what's happening. I'm comparing the, the way to deal with things. Yes, I, I agree. agree. Tim, do you, how do you uh, The on? only thing I have to say is you need, people need to go and do a little, a little fact checking, but uh, something like came up the other day. Queen Elizabeth, as you know, never visited Is it? Israel. People should go. I didn't know that. People should go and find out why she didn't visit Israel. That, and well, do you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, the simple, simple uh, 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 very short. I mean, it's short, forty-eight, and the number of British that were killed. I got King you. David, the Haganah and the Ergun. Say that again. The Haganah and the Ergun were as terrorists, even worse terrorists than the Hamas. That's uh, right. They put a bomb in King David, the Israeli, the Jewish Haganah and, and the Ergun. Shimon, what's his name? Uh, Begin. Begin. Begin, Begin yeah. was, the, was the Menachem leader. Menachem Begin. Yeah, right. They put a bomb yeah. in King David Hotel, which killed 47. Which I've been to, by the way, King David. Yeah. Yeah. 47 yeah. ranked British. People. people. But what did the British did, did, did they do? They left the country and they left both fighting. They other. did this, halas, end of it. Interesting. And That's so, an interesting, so, uh, so again, you see it, the history of that world. And I'll quit with this one. I was in a meeting in Mubarak's office, President Mubarak in Egypt, and a man who was part of the Arab League sat, was sitting beside me, knew me. He says, you know what this is about? And I said, you tell me. It's the Crusades all over again. Agreed. Really? <laughs> you said it's the Crusades it's all over again. again. Uh, by the way, gentlemen. Except who's leading the Crusades? Yeah, it's, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> Give me one war, bloody war, which is not led by religion. Give me one. I know. No, you can't. <laughs> well, you the can't. Crusaders, yeah. the, uh, uh, it, it, uh, the Irish, yeah. the Palestinians, oh, yeah. the, the Indians and the Muslims. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's coming up that's again. Coming. again. In India. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Miramar. Is it religious? Yeah. Uh, uh, folks, uh, we're going to close it up. Sure. Uh, I want to say to you two gentlemen, two of the brightest men I've ever listened to, extremely brilliant. Your history is, I mean, let's face it, you could come on this show for about 10 hours and tell us what you've done. And you, sir, I congratulate you for coming over here and turning With your business and turn, into uh, up. Uh, such a success. And now you're bringing in people uh, to recover. I can't thank you enough for being on the, by the way, you certainly enlightened me. I came here to be enlightened, and you did. Amen. People may wonder, how come we didn't have any Jewish people on the show, whatever? We were going to, but I'm gonna tell you something. I'm glad we did not. Right. Um, and I was gonna mention some of my dear friends that are going through the difficulty with anti-Semitism here, but I did not, because you covered the bases today. Oh, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna tell you about our next show. Uh, EV, EV, e vehicles, electric vehicles. I just uh, leased a brand new F-150 uh, lightning truck. It's the greatest thing I've ever owned. So Rob and I are gonna be doing a one hour documentary on electric vehicles. Uh, and that's gonna be our next show. Uh, we're gonna send it off to uh, wherever we can. I think it's a very important topic right now uh, because I'm gonna tell you something. They're safe, they're efficient, and uh, I'm gonna try to make the case for electric, electronic vehicles. Rob, uh, thank you for setting this together. I right, uh, appreciate it. Uh, and you, we'll gentlemen. see you next month on uh, Mullet and Baldacci Report. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Thank great, you. great. Great.